Welcome to the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. You are listening to Marcus Hand, editor of Sea Trade Maritime News. Today we are talking with Plamen Natskov from Maritime Strategies International about the outlook for the dry bulk shipping market in the second half of 2023. I'd like to turn now to Plamen. Hi, Marcus. Thank you for, for having us back. Uh, great, uh, great to have you and get your insights on the dry bulk shipping market. Not being one of the best performing shipping markets in recent times. How does this look for the second half of the year? You're absolutely right. Dry bulk shipping hasn't had one of its uh, best periods uh, so far this year. I think certainly, as you alluded to, there is some degree of expectations, disappointment relative to the to the end of last year, uh, at the beginning of this year, when obviously with China coming out of COVID, putting in uh, some support measures for the property sector, hopes were hopes were running high that uh, that the dry bulk shipping would uh, market would uh, would perform well. As it happens, uh, the property market, uh, various measures, various measures uh, of uh, various indicators of the Chinese property market uh, have, have, have disappointed those expectations. In fact, they're running at below last year's levels. And last year, of course, was, uh, was to some extent impacted by strict COVID restrictions and so on. So certainly we have, we have seen extreme weakness from that sector very topical of course just yesterday uh, earlier today we had a we had some uh, some further announcements of, of policy stimulus policy support measures for the chinese property market from what i understand from what we understand this is uh, for the time being simply an extension of those pre-existing support measures to the end of 24 rather than expiring it to to, to the end to the end of uh, at the end of 23 so question mark there about whether these would be sufficient to support the market from here on, which of course plays into what we can expect for Q3 and Q4. But fair to say that 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 aspect that aspect of uh, of dry bulk demand, you know, Chinese Chinese uh, real estate development, has been uh, has been a, a prime factor, a major factor for for the relative weakness of dry bulk shipping so far. I mean, just in terms of overall dry bulk demand, can you give our listeners an idea of just how much of that comes from China? The vast majority of, uh, of the major trades, of course, is, uh, is China-focused. Those major trades, of course, being INO, uh, where, where easily more than, uh, more than 50-60% of uh, overall flows uh, are accounted for uh, by China. Uh, and more recently, in fact, uh, China has stepped back into the uh, coal market, thermal some more coking coal market, so that is meaningful uh, as well. And then, of course, some of the minor, the uh, the minor, the minor bulk trades, bauxite, for example, and so on. Uh, these are these are very much se- uh, China centric uh, trades as well. So it, so it is it is difficult to overemphasize the impact of Chinese demand for the fortunes of uh, dry bulk. You alluded to that differential sentiment uh, among among different different uh, commodity markets, and I think. You know, this is a good place to to reflect on some of those and consider how how some of those commodities have have fared uh, in the first half of the year and potential implications for Q3 and Q4. So, in terms of in terms of where where expectations were at the start of the year, most hopes were for for a recovery in the strong growth in in INO uh, flows supported by that by that property market recovery in fact you know iron flows um, has uh, is up uh, year on year but very marginally so um, and and this is because if we look at some some higher frequency indications of uh, of the local Chinese steel market steel production for example we see we see extreme uh, extreme weakness uh, there uh, currently, so so every month every, every month we uh, we have we have lower and lower numbers of Chinese uh, steel production, which which suggests to us that that, that there is a, that there is a downtrend there, uh, and we're certainly in a destocking cycle. And of course, these these restocking destocking cycles will have amplifying effects over and above over and above uh, uh, fundamentals. So certainly, relatively disappointing. I know market so far 
good drive oak. Uh, and into Q3, Q4, uh, don't expect this to get much better, uh, especially against very supportive, very, very strong comparables at the end of last year. At the end of last year, we did see a pickup in iron flows into China specifically on average of um, over 100 million tons uh, per month. Uh, this would imply a substantial lift in flows from what we see currently. And from what we have seen so far in terms of steel production, in terms of property market support, it is difficult. It is difficult to envisage that uh, that level of, um, of pickup from now. Okay, so that's very much uh, the sort of Chinese impact on the market, which is obviously very large, as you, as you as you rightly said. Just looking at another factor that's we see very much in the news, which is uh, the Ukraine grain deal, um, which seems to have sort of essentially ground to a halt. Um, what impact would that have on dry bulk shipping? Uh, very good question. So the uncertainty. Uh, relating to the uh, renewal of that of that deal and the and the and from 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 what we have seen more stringent inspections uh, greater delays around inspections uh, have already have uh, have already had some of that impact so so versus late last year early this year of around three and a half four million tons on average uh, shipments even grain shipments out of Ukraine. Uh, for the last couple of months, we've only been averaging around one and a half, uh, 1.7 million tons. So, so we have seen. So, arguably, we have seen a significant, a significant uh, part of that 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 impact uh, already. This is not to say that an outright end to that to that facility to that program will not have uh, any further impact. Of course, it will, and especially because. Even if it is one and a half, two million tons a month, this is a relatively inefficient trade where uh, a vessel has to uh, stop in for inspection once on the way in, a second time on the way out, a relatively, relatively time consuming. So in, in terms of impact, yes, it will clearly have a negative impact, and especially especially in, in the Black Sea med region where you can easily see an oversupply of vessels and, and, and vessels unwilling to ballast into that region. Okay, so that's a, that's another sort of negative potentially on the market. Just for our listeners to sort of get a sense of the whole looking forward Q3, Q4, are there any positive signs or is this kind of more of the same? Well, I think so much, so much rides on those larger trades, whether it is iron or whether it is coal, that we have to be focused on those for signs of support. Now, as, as I mentioned at the moment, it is difficult to see upside on the INO front, uh, especially compared to, to what we had last year. Uh, so I think um, I, I think we're likely to see relatively weak weak fundamentals from there, unless there are stronger signs of uh, of support to that all important property sector in China. On the uh, on the coal side, actually things have been fairly supportive. So so China has stepped has stepped back into the coal market uh, in a big way. Uh, or uh, during during March March to May, um, they have had they have had record uh, amounts of uh, of coal imports at over 30 million tons uh, per month for the first time ever. Uh, so certainly a change from uh, from what from what was there last year. Uh, a question mark, of course, is how much of that was driven by pure price price incentives. We have had we have had very low gas pricing in Europe. Over the last few months, uh, on the back of high inventories, uh, of course, reducing there for coal demand. So coal has been available, has been cheaper. China, of course, had the experience of, of power outages last summer, so potentially a, a restocking drive there. How long would that last? That, of course, is a uh, is a question to ponder, given that it was price driven uh, and, and and likely directed towards ensuring security of supply over the hotter hotter summer months. Potentially, we are at the back end of that of that restocking drive uh, on the coal side. So, whether it's coal, whether it is iron ore, it is hard to see a strong indications of significant lift to trade flows. But of course, you know, the market does tend to surprise us, especially uh, if, if policy support, if policy support uh, come, be, be, becomes uh, important. <music>
That is all we have time for on this episode of the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. If you've enjoyed listening, make sure you subscribe on the app of your choice to never miss an episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs>